Hi and welcome to another Essential Lightroom video tutorial. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at creating this Walking Dead style effect. It's a pretty stylized effect and we're going to take step by step through the entire process of how to create it. As always there's a free preset that you can download using the link in the description below that'll get you exactly to this point. But as always I'd recommend sticking around, take a look at some of the extra steps we go to at the end of the video to make it just that little bit more special than what we can do in the preset. So without further ado let's crack on and take a look at how we can create this effect right now. Okay, so this effect took quite some time to go through and get to the point where I'm happy with it. One of the things you tend to find with the early Walking Dead is it's very stylized, very green, very monotone and quite flat. So we're going to go with that style. Like I say, there's a preset available in the description below so you can go and grab that and get you to this point. But as always, get an understanding of exactly how this preset works and all the configuration and tweaks we make to the image is going to be invaluable when you come to customizing the image using the preset. So let's just jump back to the original source image. So I'm just going to reset this and this is what we've got. So you can see if you've seen the opening screen of The Walking Dead, you'll know there's a cityscape in the background, quite a strong overcast blown out sky, lots of trees that are down to a monochrome kind of green and the overall image just has a kind of washed out green overtone. So we're going to go through that now and like I say this took, took quite a while to go through and there's quite a lot of settings and tweaks to get it where I'm happy with it. Now you're going to have to tweak your image. This one's got a sort of autumn kind of feel to it. So we've got some reds and yellows in there which I need to compensate for. So let's start off as always by going through the basics panel on the right hand side in the develop module. And I'm going to go through step by step. So I just basically came in and tweaked the overall temperature because I want this to sort of be more towards the yellow kind of thing so we can influence the yellows and the greens. So around 10 to 12 in there and then we brought the tint down and give that a bit of a green tone as well, around the 20 mark. So that kind of gets us a starting point. Next thing we're going to do is come down and we're going to just desat oh, so you take the contrast right down on this because I want to get it fairly flat. I want it to look sort of look really kind of dull. So we're going to take that down probably to around about 60 to 70 for this particular image, somewhere around there. Now we're going to take the highlight shadows, whites and blacks, we're going to tweak those. So I'm going to bump the highlights up because I want to blow those whites Blow them out a little bit, so probably around 15 to 20, somewhere around that region. Tweak the shadows ever so slightly, nothing too much. Drop those down. The whites we're going to take a fair old way down. Again, we're looking to sort of desaturate and flatten the overall image. And with the blacks, we're going to pull those down as well. I don't really want too much going on there, so we'll drop that down to about, about minus 40 to start off with. Now we're going to come down to the clarity. We're going to give this a bit of a bump because we're going to compensate for this extra tonal information. We're going to bump that up probably around 30, 35, somewhere around there to get some definition between the sort of the lighter areas and the darker areas. So when we do crush them down, they're going to stand out just a little bit more. We're going to take the vibrance now, which deals with the sort of warmer tones in there. And you can see that starts to bring down the greens, the yellows, the oranges. We're going to drop those down to about minus 40, minus 45, somewhere around that region. And then we're going to use the saturation to pull all of the other colors down. We're going to take those down to about, about the same kind of point, around the 40 mark. So you can see we've kind of desaturated everything right the way down. We can then choose what colors we want to put back in there. And we can overall compensate for various different aspects. So let's cut the tone curve now. We need to crush those blacks down. So let's add a couple of points in there. We're going to grab the shadow area and we're going to pull that up and you should start to see all the dark really dark areas of the image start to open up a little bit we'll pull this sort of midpoint down as well so we kind of crush those blacks out so we don't have definite black in there we just have dark dark grays so that's getting us to a good starting point we can now start working with the colors and putting some back in and concentrating on the colors and tones we want in there before i move on i just want to make a little tweak to this I'm not quite happy with it Let's bump those up even more. You can see that really starts to crush these now and makes it a little flatter. I'm going to take the midpoint and we're just going to give that a little bit of a bump. Kind of stylizes everything. Not too far. Probably around about that point. So let's take a look at before. Take a look at after. You can definitely see in the corner where you've got the shadows. That's where you can see the real difference in there. So switch that back on. 
you can see it flattens all that out and gives it a really dull matte effect. So that's pretty cool. I might come back and tweak that once I've done some of the color alterations, but that's a pretty good starting point. So let's just jump down now to the HSL slider. And this is where we can start to really influence the tones and the colors in the image. We realistically want to get rid of these red and orange tones and the yellow tones. We want to make everything just kind of green and yellow. That's the kind of overlying tone that you've got in the, the sort of the poster artwork for the, for the Walking Dead. So let's do that next. Okay, so now we're going to start tweaking these colors. Like I say, this is where most of the editing is going to take place for your image. So we're going to come to start with the hue section first of all. I want to take out the reds and the oranges, so I'm going to start to pull those down. Quite dramatic. I'm going to drag those down. Same with the oranges, and you should start to see that the colors in the tree start to adjust slightly. We want to make sure we get those to more sort of greens and yellows than reds and oranges. So let's tweak that a little bit. Let's actually bump that up slightly. And you can see that starts to get rid of the orangey reds we've got in this sort of area, in the sort of foreground kind of thing. With the yellow, we're going to bump that up as well. Bring some more yellow into it. Take that up probably about around the same kind of point, around the 30 mark. Same with the greens. We're going to push that up. I don't want to go too far with the greens because there's already quite a lot of green in this. Around plus 20 is pretty good. I'm not going to worry about the rest because there's no real blues or purples and magentas in the image itself anyway. So there's next to nothing in there. So you can see that if I make these adjustments, nothing really changes in the image. So we can pretty much leave those as they are. Saturation now. This is again, we're going to make some tweaks to this. We're going to drag the reds down around about minus 20 marks, somewhere around there. Oranges, we're going to drag those down as well. Take those down to a little bit less, around the minus 14, 15, somewhere around there. We're going to boost the yellows and the greens slightly. So let's just give those a little bit of a kick. Again, not going too crazy, but you can see we're now starting to get an overall green tint to the overall entire image, which is where we want to be. With the aquas and the blues, we're going to pull those down just to make sure there's nothing in there at all. So we're going to drag those down, make sure there's none of that going on. And then we're going to come into the luminance section, and we're going to do the same again. We're going to bump the reds up a little bit. We're going to bump up the oranges. I'm going to pull the yellows and the greens down. Not going crazy, so sort of doing this by eye, seeing what works well. All the rest can stay as they are. So let's take a look at a before and after where we've done the alterations of the HSL. So you can see it's made quite a dramatic effect, even though it looked to start off with there wasn't a lot of reds and things in there. Once we start to tweak this, you can see now we've got rid of that and given it a much more green uniform green and yellow tone to the overall foliage in the built in the uh, the sort of scene itself so that's looking pretty cool so i quite like that so next let's move on to the split toning section where we can start to influence the highlights and the shadows and we can give those some additional colors so using the split toning we really can change the overall mood of an image so let's start off with the highlights i want to give those a sort of orangey yellow kind of tone just to give, give that sort of that sense of warmth to the highlights just to sort of bring it in line with the the greens and so on so around around the 50 mark around this point kind of gets me to where i want to be saturation i'm not going to go crazy with this i just want to sort of have a suggestion of that color in there and you can see it starts to bring in some influence into the clouds and so on so we'll leave that as it is we'll adjust the balance in a moment to make sure that we can get exactly what we want now the shadows i want to give a more sort of yellowy green tone so we're going to take those up Drop those into that kind of region so you can see we're just touching on the oranges but moving more over to the yellows. Saturation, again, we're not going to go crazy with this. Probably, eh, probably around that kind of point. That's looking pretty good. I kind of like that. So you can see that now makes everything look a lot more green, especially the shadow area. So we wanted to, we can adjust the balance on this. So we can say we might want to sort of push towards the highlights where we've got that sort of orangey red and we want to go towards the shadows where we've got more green in there i'm kind of liking probably around this point again let's take a look at without and with so you can see the overall image now starts to get a little bit of a color cast which is exactly what we want we want that yellowy green overtone so that's the split toning section done we can now jump down to the effects and what I'm going to do with this is really quite subtle. I want to create a bit of a vignette to draw your attention into the road that's leading up to the city. So 
we're just going to pull that in. I don't want to go crazy with this. I'm going to keep it quite subtle. The image doesn't need too much of it. That's looking pretty good. And I'm going to take the dehaze and I'm going to drop that down to kind of flatten the image out to give it a bit of haze to it. So you can see, don't go crazy, probably about minus 10, somewhere around there. That kind of washes things out. Actually, let's take a look. Mm. I'm kind of liking actually pushing it a little bit. Probably around there, actually. Let's go for about a plus 9, plus 10 to give it a bit of contrast. So let's take a look. There's before. There's after. Quite subtle, but draws your eye to the, the image itself. So you could kind of leave it at this point if you wanted to, and that gives a pretty close approximation of what we had. But I'm going to take it a step further. We're going to take a look at a couple of other things that I would do just to give it a real cinematic kind of feel. So let's take a look at those extra steps now. Okay, we're nearly there, but there's a couple of things that I want to do. First thing is, I don't like the way the sky is pretty much monochrome. There's no real color to it. And for me, it stands out a little too much. So what I want to do is influence that with a little color. Easiest way to do that is we come to the graduated filter, click on that, and draw a graduated filter effect over the sky. Now, I've drawn this over, so most of the influence is going to be taken at the top. A little bit goes over with the buildings, but most of it's not going to affect that particular portion of the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in some color into that. Now the easiest way of doing that is if we take a look at the bottom, you can see we've got this little color chip. Before I do that, I want to make sure that nothing is selected. Everything is set to zero point. So just double click on the effect. That will make sure everything is zeroed out. So no effects are going to be applied. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to this. We're going to choose a green somewhere. I want to basically pick up a green that kind of has a yellow tint to it that kind of mimics the overall tone of the trees and everything else. So that's looking looking pretty close to where I want to be. That picks up a sort of yellowy green tone, but it's a little too strong at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the saturation slider, I'm going to bring that down until I get the amount of color that I want to place in this. That's looking quite good. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit, just so it brings out a bit more over the sky. Bring that back up, adjust the saturation. Now that's looking pretty cool, I like that. So that gets me where I wanna be. I can now just tweak the sky if I want to, so I'm just gonna bring a little contrast into that to make some of those clouds stand down. I'm gonna drop the exposure down. Actually, let's push that up a little bit. Not too much, about a third of a stop. So we start to get a little bit of blown out highlights in there. With clarity, we'll bump that a little bit just to get some sort of contrast in it to kind of bring it in and match it in with everything. And we'll grab the highlights and we'll drop those down so we kind of dull things down a little bit. So it brings it in line with the rest of the image. So let's look at before and let's look at after. So you can see just that little tweak makes a big difference to the overall end result. So let's, let's just click on done. And we've now brought in the color into the sky. So I'm happy with that. So next up, let's make it look a little bit more cinematic. And the easiest way of doing that is to just come up to the crop option. Select that, and what we're going to do is change this from original, and we're going to choose 16 by 9, which is a much closer crop to what you see in movie or television. So that's going to give you a sort of widescreen look. So I select that. Now I can position that exactly where I want to sort of either bring in the detail from the sky as the main influence, or the cars driving to and from, or we can sort of put it up and make the cars more of an influence of the road. So let's kind of get that where I'm happy with it, which is probably around about there. That looks quite good. We'll hit done. So we've now got that set out to a more cinematic look, and there's a couple more things I want to do, and then we'll call it a day. So I'm going to come down to the effects section, and I want to make sure that I've got a nice vignette on this. So you can see at the moment, we've got a small amount of vignette on there, and that's looking pretty good. So it draws your attention into the actual focal point of the image itself. The dehaze, I want to make sure that I add a little bit of that. About plus nine is where I was, that's looking pretty cool. And finally, I want to put some grain in there to give it a more cinematic appearance. So let's just zoom in so we can see what we're, we're going to do when we make these changes. And the sky is always a good place to see where this grain is going to start to show up. So I'm just going to grab the grain slider, bring that into around, around 40, see where I kind of like that. You can see that gives us a nice gritty look. I always like to make sure that the roughness is increased on there because it gives it a more natural cinematic film look. And the size is boosted up to about 25 and you can see that now just adds a bit of grain to the overall image, adds a little bit of grit to what we've ended up with. So let's take a look at before and after. And you can see that now brings it into a nice final point. So 
that's pretty much all there is to creating this effect. I know it's quite a long tutorial, there's quite a few different points in there, but it is one of those things that requires a little bit of attention to get a nice close effect to the original kind of posters. Anyway, hope you found this useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comments section. We try to read everything you post and answer as many questions as possible. Don't forget you can download the free preset with a link in the description below. And until next time, take care.